discussion about the science, but, science, but we do have a scientist, just because it's always good to have one around, uh, the Executive Director of the Environment Institute, Mike Young. Thank you, Annabelle. Leadership involves change. It involves all of us being involved in the process of change, discussing the issues openly, in depth and with rigour, something we don't do well. We search for the solutions, we find them, and then leadership's about implementing them. Climate change is just one form of change. It puzzles me when I look at it because when I look at the business world that half of the panel lives in, the rate of change is massive. Think of the exchange rate. Very few, a month ago, you could buy a US dollar that cost you 70 cents Australia. It's been up at $1.10. Changes of 30, 40% happen all the time in business. The rate of change in climate is about 1 or 2% at most. It's a very, very slow change. We shouldn't be frightened about this. In terms of the issues business has to deal with, climate change is simple. The science is good. There are some challenges. I think there are three. The first is to improve our knowledge about some of the things we don't have well understood in this country. One is the long-term climate history. We spend all our time looking at what happened in the last 100 years. We don't look at what's happened in the last four, five, six hundred years. If we look at that long record, which we don't have, because it's a scientific gap, we might manage this nation differently. The second one, and the second challenge is about driving investment and innovation to reduce the extent of adverse change. And issues like the um, carbon tax and the emissions trading scheme that, that, that's being set up are about driving and shaping that investment. It's about doing things like phasing out subsidies. Why would any nation, go home and ask your children this, why would any nation go out and subsidise the destruction of the planet? That's what subsidies do in so many areas. We should also talk about what we tax. Why, for example, do we tax labour? Why do we tax the things we earn but not the things we burn? I was taught when I did environmental economics that it made sense to tax the environmental bads and not tax the things that are good. Working hard is good for the environment. Burning things that wreck the environment is not so good. So perhaps we need to talk about tax shifts towards greener growth. We could also talk about ways to enhance, as the government is doing, sequestration of carbon, carbon farming, um, building um, biodiversity corridors. These are all part of the plans which make sense. And then we get into building the institutional arrangements, which is the third challenge, to speed up adjustment, to speed up the rate of change and adaptation. One of the things that this is going to require, and we all know it, is for us to live in different places. So why do we have stamp duty on houses? Every time you sell a house and move to a more logical place, the government takes about $30,000 so we don't move. It slows up the rate of change. There's so many other things we could do to restrict urban sprawl or, or um, even tax capital gains on housing. And then we'd have a very, very more robust structure our cities. I could go on. But to me, leadership is about making this world a better place for our children, their children, and their children's children. Thank you.